nuclear belt, fissurium belt, early blight, late blight and leaf cover viruses. You might have experienced that tomato if you are growing there is a shrinkage of leaf and leaves are distorted. So if you are growing this one, so your tomato will not dry, I mean uktharu bolte na, lagate yolam, there also we have variety to develop. So again example from the pusa that uh, for carrot there is a heat and humidity, I mean for uh, heat stress and humidity stress, there are two very interests. This, this can host a number of pollinators that can be placed if anywhere in the kitchen garden. This is very good uh, bamboo type of thing. You can make locally at your place. Next please. Uh, bigger height, they can be managed very well. So these are the uh, low growing varieties. For example, mango, amrapali, you are knowing very well, but Arunika and Ambika, two are varieties from the CISS Lucknow, they can also be grown. Guava, Sweta, Lalit, Lalima, and Hava, Sakeda, this can be grown. Similarly, number of uh, for fruits, we have varieties now and five for kitchen garden. But how to grow you, just quickly I can tell you. Next please. So these are the different kind of poly. either we go for mitigation or adaptation. So these are the real challenge for the urban area as well as rural area. Now what is the current status in the country? We have very limited water resource, that is only 4% of water resource. Land is only 2.3%, but our population is 17%. We have to support with a very, very limited water resource and land resource to the tune of 17% of the world population so we have to feed everybody. No other choice, we have to go for modern methods of irrigation, that's a drip irrigation, or uh, micro sprinkler, or a sprinkler, or fogger, all these kind of irrigation systems we have to. Here also I have shown you is on the left side, there's a small with a tank, and a very simple method is also there. You have a tank, fill up the it, link it with the small tubings in your kitchen garden or your that will give a control, not only increase the water use efficiency or water application efficiency, then only it will be possible for any garden. In an urban area, this challenge is much more as compared to the rural area where the rain, uh, rivers and other groundwater is not really a challenge. Nitty of that. And using small micro sprinkler. You don't need very big motor, very big pump set, maybe less than a half an hour horsepower pump set, one hour horsepower pump set, even your, uh, if your house is uh, say four uh, uh, story or something like that, you have a tank established at that on the top or you're using that water, you can use without the motor also because sufficient head is available with the micro sprinkler and all. Next please. In a per hectare basis, they are able to produce that much quantity of uh, uh, fruits. Next please gardening, community garden, vertical farming, I will be showing some examples of vertical farming. Hydroponics and aquaponics are the now new words which have been very commonly used, aeroponics and also which is happening. Uh, we need to have a lot of organic practices and taking the technology. <coughs> Next please. With the advent of more and more technology, refinement has been come up. It's a basically what we are producing is in a soilless cultivation with a liquid nutrient solution with or without the use of artificial media. Artificial media, as Dr. Tomar has already mentioned, that you need to use more and more artificial cocoa pit because soil does not have that kind of organic capability. So you need to uh, use that kind of material which holds more and more water and nutrients like uh, clay, Fire, perlite, vermiculite, bricks, shards, polystyrene packing material, uh, peanuts, wood fiber, a lot of uh, uh, waste material can also be used which can hold water. And uh, then you have a liquid hydroponics, floating hydroponics, aggregate hydroponics, like uh, these plants are placed in a tube that has a slit cut and this is a pl uh, plastic for the roots to be inserted. You can have a cup. Uh, with a hole inside 
and then you put it that in nutrient solution is being circulated controlled nutrient solution with a ready nutrient solution and you get a good quality crop floating in a horizontal flat you can have a plants are grown on a floating raft or all that that is very been common you uh, i can give you the example of daljeel jahan pe floating uh, cultivation bada common hai this is another example of floating hydroponic aggregate this is one of the example is a rock wool rock wool is a very good uh, absorbent of water it contains holds water and uh, uh, retains sufficient air aeration ke liye sufficient space rehta hai usme and that gives a very good growth to the uh, plants and this is the one of the example and hydroponics is being becoming more and more common in urban area uh, and uh, peri urban area next please the people land degradation food safety and so on what is the availability and climate change as has been told will not affect only crops or ecosystems but also pest and diseases but also the methods we, which we are using for controlling pest and diseases their effectiveness will also be affected so how to sustain those methods how to sustain their effectiveness and at the same time uh, managing the pest and diseases in an eco friendly manner that is our our uh, need today if you ask me we should not use any chemical pesticide in kitchen gardens and if at all needed we should use very very precisely and uh, means judicious way and that also created pest management as you know this pest sector disease they cause lot of loss at national level 60 million tons of food grain 65.4 million tons of horticulture produce but from your perspective what i say when you are interested in kitchen garden you are very passionate about it you purchase a seed you bring a seed you do all the practice and when that is damaged by pest and disease that is that is an emotional issue you say oh, i have done so much work and my this is damaged you are very uh, what you call disappointed so therefore at large scale or smaller scale problems are similar and at every scale we need to minimize pesticide use and use non chemical methods or more of biological methods first and then move towards chemicals and this you know that is white pest during winters it comes from hills to plains and during summers when uh, uh, there is the heat in plains it goes to uh, plains it goes to hills like from himachal to punjab punjab to himachal or other area uttarakhand to tri areas of uh, up and all that so that is also being affected by my, my such species are also getting affected next is well documented or higher kinor and other areas we getting good quality potatoes apples vegetables with that pest will also move but take some time but they will move so there will be shifting of these i already told you biocontrol agents they are our farmers friend or our friends use we don't have only harmful insects or disease we have useful organisms also but we also kill them with pesticides so neither we have uh, those uh, nature's forces with us nor we have effective pesticides when we use pesticides indiscriminately pest they also become resistant in the sense when we are taking some medicine after few years or few months doctor says we have to change the medicine or we have to change increase the dose same thing happens with insects also or diseases when we use the same chemical again and again they also become resistant so no more those chemicals they are they are not effective therefore during winters or summers they undergo sleep or inactivity what is called hibernation or estivation so therefore with rising temperature one or two degree rise if temperature still remains uh, favorable for that species its growth rate will increase they may realize multi men more generations per year like small insects like aphids white fly jerseys their life cycle is very short 10 days 15 days 20 days 
and they get favorable temperature for two months or three months, more number of generations. So that is another effect. Next. This I have already told you, migratory changes and uh, they will affect also our useful will also be affected. And plus this uh, uh, time and spatial changes with the, uh, you know, movement of the crest upwards towards hills or northern latitudes. Like Antarctica, they are observing higher activity of the insect. Hilly areas, I told you, Uttarakhand, Himachal, Northeast, they are observing more activity. That is well, well, well documented now. Next. They are not using pesticide in all the area. But where they are used, they are misused or overused. That is causing problem. So this simple plea that you no, know, we are very, very using less amount and therefore uh, pesticides are not culprit for all these uh, adverse effects. That is, I don't, I don't agree with this. Next. That is the simple funda of uh, this integrated pest management. And at the same time, we want to kill the pests and diseases, but we have to protect these, like pollinators. A lot of talk was there on pollinators and these are worms. And then vermicompost. So earlier they were there were plenty in our soils, but what, is, what has happened to this due to mechanize other things, all those are killed. Next. So this is the if you see these are the useful ones and see we we knew to know that first you should also differentiate what are the, your friends and what are your enemies. So these are pollinators, this coccinella, these spiders, they are friends. Sometimes uh, people call us that uh, spider is there or microbe, what should I do? I should be nothing to do, I, rather that is helping you to uh, kill, eat your pests. So that is, you have to bear this in mind that first differentiate between harmful, useful, that is the first step for uh, safe use of pesticides. Excess use of fertilizers and water aggravates pest problems, that I already told. Pesticide kill all the organisms, useful as well as harmful. We have to use them very judiciously. Most pest problems are due to monoculture. In kitchen garden, I think that issue is not there, but here also you can put a different, uh, in kitchen garden, like in nutri garden, we put a different crop, so that is not there. Next. Next. This is a farmer's field school just to show how it's low. When pest problems, they are like Ayurvedic medicines. Biopesticide like Ayurvedic. Ayurvedic, when your disease is at the you know, initial stage, then that can be controlled. But when it becomes acute, then you have to go for allopathy or surgery. So these biopesticides always bear in mind, like neem, suppose you want to neem. Neem oil, use initial stages when the few pests are there. So that they will not increase. So that way you can better. But when, so for that you have to continuously watch your plants, monitor, keep an eye on whether something happening under the leaf, over the leaf, useful one. So that is the one major key to fight timely intervention. With biopesticides, I think that is very, very useful step in kitchen gardens at small scale or even at higher barrier crop for the, this is like windy and other uh, this uh, is uh, is other vegetables. Next, yes. some effect carryover effect on the pest. Pest will also be there. Neem cake and uh, burmi compost, of course, green manuring. What what is if you do? Avoid excess use of nitrogen. Potash must be used. Potash. Potash, people are not using potash. Potash actually imparts resistance or make plants tolerant to pest and diseases. Most of the time we use only nitrogen, nitrogen. That creates imbalance. These are called mechanical methods. Removal by hand, like this, all this. This brinjal shoot and fruit borer. Sometimes it uh, kills the shoot, top shoot. It can remove this larvae worry in the soil. Sometimes what you damaged fruit be drop there. So again, this pest comes out and goes to the another plant. And moreover, when don't, don't throw your damaged fruits. Don't, you can use them. Because these, these insects, they are vegetarian and all that. Uh, you can remove that part, brinjal also. So you can, that leftover part. And more, now uh, these uh, consumers are also becoming very, very wise in the sense they go to the, they go, go to our, this mother dairy and her stalls and see if some fruit is damaged, they think 
it is better because say if we got pesticide may not have been used on it so that is there we found your kitchen garden i think they provide them uh, this uh, pollen and nectar they need pollen and nectar so they will create a lot of natural enemies and they will feed on insects simply putting flowering plants on around your kitchen garden next these are all useful ones see so you know are not harmful everything we need to protect them nature has provided them for us they kill the pests but we are killing eliminating them with pesticides that is the harmful effect next like this we have used the large scale we have used and they, and uh, put in muslin cloth uh, some thin cloth overnight deep some water morning you can squeeze and then spray 500 grams in 10 liters that gives you 5% neem kernel ex, neem seed kernel extract you can ask your mali or rosa to do that i think lot of neem is wasted in our country our neem next very repellent for the white fly and other insect lemon grass is very useful for as a medicinal plant also tea also people use lemon tea and all that so lemon grass tea so lemon grass also <laughs> reduces your uh, pest incidence next is very gold chili pepper somebody was talking chili pepper about 100 grams of chilies are finely crushed mixed in water let to stand overnight the solution is filtered through a cloth and sprayed onto the plant against aphids chilies next green leaf extract with cow's urine this is also there somebody your point was there 1 kg halimi is kongamia tulsi mixed with 100 liters of cow urine water to ferment for 10 to 15 days and then spread fermented buttermilk they have found white flies they have found it very very useful fermented buttermilk for vector control horticulture oils of course next i think all in all this has been a most fruitful seminar for us to manage our home gardens if we go through these notes again i am sure you can use them accordingly thank you so much